The trebuchet was a fearful and effective siege engine of medieval combat. More powerful than any catapult, massive trebuchets could sling large objects at their opponents to cause a great amount of damage. Now it's time for you to build your own mini siege engine. Here's a quick rundown of the supplies you'll need. Chopsticks, a few paper clips, the cap from a marker or pen, some thread, a plastic container with a lid, and a heavy object or substance to place in the container, some duct tape, a pair of scissors, some marshmallows. So the key to the trebuchet's movement is the counterweight. The heavier the weight and the farther the counterweight falls, the more potential energy there is to launch your projectile, which in our case is a marshmallow. To sustain the counterweight, you'll need to make the trebuchet very strong. One way to do this is to tape chopsticks together end to end. This creates sturdier building materials for the frame. You'll need 12 of these pairs in total. Take four of the pairs and lay them out in a square. Now connect the corners together with copious amounts of duct tape. What you're constructing is the trebuchet's base, so make sure it sits nice and flat. Now that your base is ready, it's time for the upright portion. Notice, though, that only one end of the chopstick pairs used here is taped together. You'll wrap long pieces of duct tape around the joints to lash the brace together. Now you'll use more chopstick pairs to make a brace like this. To help it handle more weight with grace, you'll need to construct two more braces. This will prevent any side-to-side -side motion or sagging. Note that these braces are shaped like triangles. Now you need an axle for the arm of the trebuchet to rotate on. You can use a single chopstick, but you need the arm to move as freely as possible. So you need a short, rigid tube that can fit around the chopstick to allow the arm to rotate. This tube doesn't need to be very long. In fact, the cap of this marker would be ideal as long as you can cut the end off so that you have a tube. The chopstick rotates nicely inside it. At this point, it should be apparent why the top of the uprights were left untaped. You need to insert the axle. You'll hold the axle in place with some more duct tape when the axle is permanently inserted. But for the moment, you need to be able to take it out again. Now it's on to the trebuchet's arm. To accomplish this, lay five chopsticks out together like so. You want to have as long an arm as possible so that the trebuchet can launch your projectile a good distance. Position the cap in between the arm's chopsticks towards the short end. We're going to do this about eight centimeters from the short end, but the distance might need to be a bit different for your trebuchet. This will depend on the size of the container you use for your counterweight. To hold the projectile, you need a hook at the end of the arm. You can use a bent paper clip for this purpose. You also need a shaft for the counterweight to hang on. It's important that the shaft can fit easily between the upright post, so you might need to cut a bit off the end of a chopstick to use here. Now insert this shaft about four centimeters from the short end of the arm. Remember to take into account the size of your container when measuring this distance. Now put the chopstick axle through the arm and position the arm in the frame. You want as much height as you can get, so place the axle as near to the top of the frame as you can. To make the counterweight bucket, we'll use this leftover lunch container. The larger the counterweight, the more potential energy you have available to launch your projectile. It can't be too tall or there won't be room for it to swing when the trebuchet is fired. If the container is too short, it won't hold very much weight. Our container is just right. It has good height, it's able to hold a lot of weight, and it also has a lid, which is convenient for preventing any nasty accidents from happening when the trebuchet is fired. Now you need to do some cutting. With your scissors, you can make two small holes in the bucket. Once you have your holes, you can insert a chopstick through the holes. This provides a way to hang the bucket on the trebuchet. Unfortunately, this chopstick is also too long, so it needs to be shortened a bit. Make any necessary adjustments to your chopstick as well. To hang the bucket on the trebuchet, you need a few paper clips. These can be twisted around the chopsticks like so. A nice additional feature is to make some duct tape bushings so that the arm and the counterweight container can't slip sideways. Now hang the counterweight on the trebuchet. Sideways movement of the arm and counterweight would reduce the effectiveness of this magnificent weapon. All that remains is to fill up the counterweight container with something heavy. Maybe some loose change you have lying around since the weight of coins are known. Count the number of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters in the container and figure out the weight. According to our calculations, we have 2,242 grams for a counterweight.
check your trebuchet to make sure that the counterweight can swing freely and make it through the uprights without hitting the bottom or sides of the frame. If you need to make any adjustments, now is the time. Let us see what happens when the bucket drops. Oh yeah, this will work just fine. Now we just need our projectile. To adapt this for your trebuchet, just tie a short piece of thread around it. Make a small loop at one end to go over the hook at the end of the trebuchet arm. The length of the thread is critical if you want to maximize the distance your destructive marshmallow will travel. So experiment a bit with different thread lengths. And there it is, a fearful battle-ready trebuchet ready to fire and wreak havoc.